All right, so just about to start work on the van. We're doing quite a, or starting to do quite a big job. Already had an argument, so that bodes well. It's pissing it down, so that's also great. So I think it's safe to say we're both really looking forward to this afternoon, aren't we? It's gonna be great. If you're new to this channel, we're James and Sarah, also known as The Whole World or Nothing. We used to be full-time backpackers, exploring the world and writing about our travels in our blog. And then the world changed. We got repatriated from Peru and found ourselves back in the UK at a loose end. So we decided to do a van conversion. Make sure you hit subscribe now so you can join us in this series as we share the highs and many lows of converting an old Mercedes Sprinter panel van into our dream home on wheels. Go on then, board the tits off us. <laughs> I'll try and say it quick. So we are going to attempt to install at least the first part of our diesel heater. Here it all is, all the bits that you get in the box. This is the heater, this is the fuel pump, this is the, um, what's it called, display where you turn it on and off. This is the pipe that the heat comes out of into the living area, and it has a little thing that goes on the end, whatever this is called. Uh, what else have we got? This is the diesel tank, so that's going to sit in the garage area. The actual heater is going to be going under this seat down here. Then you have your exhaust, which goes underneath the vehicle. You have your air intake pipe that also goes underneath the vehicle with this on it, which I think is to stop bugs and stuff crawling up it something like that um you've got a filter that goes on your fuel pump to filter fuel the fuel line a bit of fuel tube whatever you would call it that's just to join the bits of the tube together and some various clips of different sizes a bag of screws and bolts and nuts and stuff this is the um, electric side of it they're all joined together and plug into various bits and bobs this comes with it which is the plate that the heater sits on however we're not using this i can't even remember the why now but we're not using it it's easier to use this oh basically because it meant drilling you would have to drill two holes three holes actually two holes for those and then one for the fuel pipe to go through um, and it would have been quite fiddly to do that because we'd have had to make sure we had an area cut out of the lino and the flooring and the insulation so that we could sit the plate flush down so what we're actually doing is using this which we bought separately which is called a turret uh, made especially for this heater so what's going to happen is we're going to drill a big hole out stick that through which is deep enough to go through the floor and then that'll just sit on top of our floor so we've not got to cut any of our flooring out other than that hole also comes with an instruction booklet which to be honest I started to read but it's in English but it's just um, obviously written in a different language and not translated very well so that's kind of useless but we've watched plenty of videos on how to do it this isn't a how-to video so you know don't uh, follow what we do unless we do it right and then you know maybe do so should we get to it let's go <laughs> <laughs> uh. all right so the turret that we are putting in has got a hole diameter of 125 millimeters so we've got a hole saw that is 127 millimeters the diameter so hopefully that is going to cut the exact size hole that we need That's it. That's it. It's pretty simple. It's quite thin metal, isn't it? <laughs> it always feels a lot harder than this, well, a lot more momentous than it is actually ever when you get down to it. it feels like such a big deal cutting a hole in the, in the van, right? Yeah, yeah. And then it takes a few seconds. And you've got the hole. And you've got the hole. <laughs> Let's go and check us in the right place. So for anyone that hasn't noticed, we're now underneath the van. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like it's in a good place. Yeah? Yes. Let's have a look. It's just there. So, this okay. 
is gonna go uh, try and get it in the center ish there yeah the other way around but that's where that's gonna oh in fact let me put it that way that's gonna be like that so you'll just see the circle bit from the um from the underneath of the van then we've got space that we can put the bolts through to secure it to the floor this is by the way what we were using to measure the distance of stuff because we'd already put this in um so in terms of this area that was available we were measuring where this was going to go off that and it's worked out quite well right perfect i think it's pretty much that bang in the middle isn't it yeah good job okay let's go put it in after confirming that the pilot hole was in the right place it was time to cut the hole proper but we immediately hit a hitch okay slight problem we're gonna to need to wait a little while smoke coming out of that. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> so probably give it a few minutes and then try again. <laughs> I think this has stopped smoking now. So shall we go Time try to go the again. After letting the drill cool off, we cut through the individual layers of lino, wood, insulation and finally the van floor separately. And so the moment of truth, does it fit? Let's give it a go. Straight in. Sweet as a nut. That's perfect. Just put some hammer right around the bare metal, the edges of the hole, and tried as best as I can to dab it into the four holes that we've just drilled through that the bolts are going to go in to secure the turret to the floor. We waited for that to dry before realising that because we were using the turret we needed longer bolts than were supplied with the diesel here. Bolts which we didn't have. I guess where we're going? Well you know. I well, know. Do you want to tell them? I think them? everyone else knows. B and Q. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know if they have all these in all the hardware stores, we don't have them in Wix today, but this is one of the best things about being q the pick and mix, because you don't have to buy a whole bag of screws, you can get a variety of different ones that you need. By the way guys, if you're getting anything from pick and mix, because I did know this when we first came here, you pay for the bag, so that bag that Jay's got there in his hand is 250 and whether you put one screw in it or it's absolutely ramajammed it's the same price so we like to get our money's worth and get <laughs> I reckon you can get another handful in there <laughs> all right so we've got the turret plate all secured in now with the four bolts through the floor there 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 and there and then we've actually got the heater secured in as well so that's what you can see coming through there. So that's secured in with these four bolts. These are the exhaust and the air inlet and that right there is the fuel pipe. So we've just got to silicone all around the edge here to make that all nice and watertight. We'll probably put a little bit around these nuts here as well, seeing as they are holstered into the van and jobs are good then. And here's what we ended up with. Not pretty, but definitely waterproof. What's happening then? Well, we're just trying to work our way through putting the bits and pieces of this kit together. And we have come to a slight issue because there's things that need to be secured to the outlets and the inlets of the actual heater itself <laughs> with these Jubilee clips. And they've hopefully supplied the right amount of Jubilee clips, but this Jubilee clip is too small for this pipe so that won't work really so we're either going to need a, a bigger jubilee clip or figure out a way of getting this one on um and it's proven quite difficult so for 
frustrating. A little bit. This is our fuel tank that's going to hold the diesel. So that gets bolted into place through those three holes there. But before we put it in place, we've got to drill a hole. We think through here we're going to do it so that the fuel line can go in. Should we do that? Let's do it. The nozzle that extracts diesel out of the tank and into the fuel line actually sits inside the tank, secured into place with a nut that screws onto it from the outside. After some puzzling over how on earth this was even possible to do, we came up with the idea of feeding the length of string through the hole, tying the nozzle on and pulling it back through the hole for the nut to screw on. We then screwed the tank into place onto the side of the table cabinet we built last week. The electrics that come with this are all joined together, which makes it look quite complicated, however it's really not. So the main one, that plugs into the actual heater and then you've got a positive that's got a fuse in it that needs to come back into your battery. There's a negative that is obviously shorter because they intend on it joining to the body of the van, which we haven't done with our electrics. So not with the ones that we've put in anyway. Um, so we need to extend that to bring it back to the battery. And then you've got this one, that goes into the controller to turn it on and off. And then this one that goes into the fuel pump. They're all different, the connection, so you literally can't get them wrong. It's like just plug and play kind of thing. So we're just gonna put these in place. Um, obviously extend this one and then see if we need to extend this one as well. So what's the update? Update is we have got some better Jubilee clips. These are like proper heavy duty ones. Got them from our beloved B&Q. <laughs> um, they're actually quite expensive, I think. They're like a quid each, basically, yeah. for, for one of these. But we only need four, so it's not too bad. So we're gonna get this exhaust pipe on. We're gonna get the um, other bit on, the air intake on, and we're gonna try and get the rest, as much of the installation that we can do as possible done in the next hour or so. So these are the Jubilee clips that we got with the kit that are just, I don't know, quite cheap. They're a little bit naff. We can't get them to tighten properly over the pipes. So we've got these better ones that are a little bit more heavy duty and hopefully they are going to work a lot better and give us a much tighter seal. So what's happening now? Well, I've just tightened it all up and it's a lot better than the other Jubilee clip because it actually tightens for a start. But there's still a bit of an issue that it's not 100% kind of sealed in there. There's still a little bit of movement. So I think what we're gonna to need to do is get some sealing putty, exhaust putty, that you can just run around the inside of it and that should form a really strong bond between this silencer and the exhaust pipe. Cause I'm not like 100% happy with just using the Jubilee clip. I think it would be fine, especially as this is going to be held in place and this is going to be held in place. So there mm. shouldn't be too much movement that it would fall off, but I'm not 100% comfortable with it, you know, being able to have that bit of movement that it does at the moment. So... It's the other end as well, isn't it? It's, yeah, the other end is obviously going directly onto the heater. And if that falls off, then the exhaust is going to be coming out really close to the underside of the van which is not what you want. I mean, the issue is that the, the metal that this is made out of is really thin and flimsy. So I think the Jubilee clip um, is actually just kind of crushing it and pushing it into a different shape. Again, it's fine. It works, but I just want to make double sure. Yeah. So we better go get some exhaust putty. <laughs> out again. Okay, we've got the exhaust putty. So what's happening now? Uh, not much. <laughs> read the instructions and it says for best results leave overnight to harden or run the engine slowly. I think that's assuming that it's going on your actual car exhaust but because this is going on our heater exhaust we can't run the heater because well it's not fixed up yet so we're just gonna have to wait and do it when we don't need to move the van like tomorrow. So unfortunately we're gonna have to try and cover up the holes that are going into the heater from below where the exhaust and the intake pipe should actually be because we're going on a bit of a trip this afternoon and we don't want anything getting up there. So we covered up the holes with some plastic, secured in place with zip ties, ready to come back to it. 
I am just sorting out the rest of the heater that we didn't complete the other day. And it's actually quite tricky because I'm underneath at the moment trying to fit all these pipes on. And this one here is the fuel pipe that's just attached by a little bit of um, fuel hose there that sticks on both ends. There's a metal pipe that comes out, the rubber fuel hose goes on that and then the fuel pipe goes into that. And then as you can see, this is the air intake, but it's really tight, quite close to the, um, the fuel pipe. So in order to, to do that up, there's not much space. Uh, I just had to use a ratchet rather than a screwdriver to get that Jubilee clip really tight. And then I'm gonna pop the exhaust onto this one. It's quite handy because they actually only fit onto the pipes that they're meant to fit on, so you can't get them confused really. Um, and then I'm gonna to have to figure out exactly where we want to position them so that they're not facing each other, not facing forward and angled downward, I think are the three things that you meant to do. So that might be a little bit easier said than done. The intake and the exhaust have to point in opposite directions for hopefully obvious reasons, but there were limited places we could place them. Eventually we settled on a location and attached them to the chassis with self-tapping screws. Even though we opted for the better Jubilee clips, I'm also going to put some of this uh, exhaust putty on just to doubly make sure because I'm, s I'm not 100% happy with the um, connection still basically. So this should set once we actually run the heater really hard and just keep those two in place. And I'm going to put it between the pipe and the actual outlet as well where I'm attaching this end to and hopefully this isn't going to come apart. How are you doing under there? Very well, thank you. Fuel line looks um, all, all tidy and nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there. It's absolutely mammoth. It's really long. We're right. going to have to cut a load off, but it's impossible to tell how much until it's through. Right. So I'm going to have to push the whole lot through. And then cut it off once it's actually through. But what I've done He's put a load of that fuel line on. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that anywhere. No. Oh yeah, I can see a bit actually. Yeah. So, because we're using the holes that are actually already in the chassis, there's tons for some reason that go like in all different directions. So rather than looping it under all of the cross beams, we're actually going to put it through. But to protect it from the metal, even though it's kind of rubberized, we've just put a little bit of this black fuel pipe on which will give it a little bit more strength in the bits where it's going through the metal. So it's fuel pipe on fuel pipe? Fuel pipe or on fuel pipe. top of fuel pipe. <laughs> fuel pipe in fuel pipe. Yeah. Alright, I'll leave you to it. Okay. So what are you on with now? Well I'm sorting the pump out. It's got to go at a funny angle. <laughs> funny angle? Apparently. So I just need to attach it to the fuel pipe and attach the fuel pipe into the jerry can full of diesel that this is all going to run off and then attach oh just do that bit don't think too far ahead <laughs> i'm trying to figure out what this is even attached to it's attached to the <laughs> heater isn't it yeah so it needs to this needs to attach the fuel pipe fuel pipe needs to attach to the jerry can yeah that's and it and then it will pull it's already on the heater under the, the van the, the pump will pull it out of the diesel and then underneath the van yeah and then back up into the heater so then once i've got this pump on and fixed up and you have the electrics on and fixed up yeah that should be it hopefully yeah yeah Cool. I need to figure out what angle this needs to go at. Good luck with that. Do you know what um, cable size it is? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it say in the instructions? 
Yeah, of course it doesn't say in the instruction. Well, I don't know. It says all kind of nonsense <laughs> instructions. So it's probably 51 north pound sign. <laughs> Yeah, this book is nonsense, man. Anyway, it's got an inline um, fuse, which is, I think, just check. Yeah, 15 amp. So as long as the cable's rated for 15 amp, um, that's fine. And this one is, this is the same one as we use for the fridge. It's more than rated for that. So that'll be fine. We'll do that one. Obviously, I don't need to extend the positive cable this is more than long enough to go into here um, but they only provide you with a really short negative cable um, I think the idea again is that you put that onto the chassis um, again that's not something that we've done with our system so we need to extend that so that I can run that back to the battery back here ready yeah <laughs> what, what am I ready for <laughs> I'm just putting the um, the positive and the negative cables onto the um, the fuse box, but you're doing me a favour by filming um, because I need the light on as well. Because okay. <laughs> I can't see. I'm going to turn the electrics back on. Okay. Hopefully nothing goes pop. So first good sign. Okay, I've already put it onto here. So that's the onto the um, fuel pump. And it's plugged into the display down there as well. So we just need to, uh, obviously all these cables need tidying up and everything, but. We're going to test it first, yeah. Yeah. So what did we um, just remember that we need to put in it? Not we. <laughs> <laughs> I'd remember. Do you remember what you were like? Oh, shall we test it? Uh, it needs diesel. It's a diesel heater. So <laughs> I'd pull that up if I were you. I was just about to flick it on. <laughs> I feel quite nervous about this, by the way. Yeah, me too. It's the first like fuel that we've put in the van. Everything else is water, do you know what I mean? Like there's no water in yet, there's no gas in yet, mm. there's no diesel in yet. Well there is about to be. Yeah. Oh, okay, so um I press OK, hold that down. Yeah. And then press down. Oh let's press up. No. And press down. <laughs> oh. Do you keep it pressed? Up. No. Oh my god, what are you doing? Wait, 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 wait. Hold OK. Press and hold OK. Yeah. Press, Press down. It. it just goes off. Watch. Oh. What? <laughs> uh, wait. Um, Press up. You have to let go of that then, that. There we go. So that's oh. the pump. It's Priming nice. itself. Okay, hopefully you can see this, but it's already in there. That's got a different colour to the rest of the pipe slightly yellowy, same colour as the diesel, and you can just see it filling up the filter just there at the bottom. I think this is going to take a while, but it's starting pumping and, more importantly, nothing appears to be leaking from the valve, so we just got to wait, I think. It's got to come all the way up that pipe there, up there, into the pump, through there, down the bottom of the van, under the van and into there, so yeah, it'll be a while. Right, so you think it's primed? Yeah, We well we did it once and then it stopped, but I didn't think it had been going very long at all enough to push it round, just considering like how much it had got to, so we did it again for a bit. And then I didn't want to leave it too long because I don't know if it like floods the heater with fuel. That's not going to be good, is it? I don't know. <laughs> so should I turn it on? Yeah, give it a go. <laughs> give it a whirl. What's the worst that could happen? Eh? <laughs> well, something's happening. Yeah. The glow plug is glowing. Yeah. Yeah, and the fans on. Uh, air intake and the exhaust is 
flashing, they're going, fans on. Fantastic. So we've just got to wait for the pump to kick in again, I think. Okay, good. there's warm air coming out. Is it? Yes. Ah, we did it! We have got a heater. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. I mean, this noise is still a bit mental. Yeah, I mean, but it's the first time, like maybe, do you know what I mean? I think it's, it's settling down now a bit. It's not as like, mm -hmm. That is nice and hot. Jay, it's nice. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we did it. <gasps> I'm so proud of us. Yeah. Well, that's it for this week, dudes. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, now's the time to hit that thumbs up and drop us a comment down below to let us know. And if you're new in town, why not join the adventure and subscribe? And be sure to click that little alarm bell as well so you get notified every time we post a new video. Next week, we get in an almighty fight with our LPG tank. It's definitely not to be missed, so see you then.